Hello and welcome to 3D Print Passion. Today we are talking about avoiding warping during a 3D print. Have fun watching the video. Warping. Basically, there are two reasons for warping, but they often occur together. One is an insufficient bad adhesion and the other is a strong component warping due to cooling. The latter mainly affects filaments that are known to strong cooling shrinkage, like ABS. Let us first look together at the first subject, bed adhesion. Without a well-leveled bed, nothing works. This is the basis of every 3D print. If warping occurs, this is the first point to be dealt with. Whether it's a copy paper, a recipe, or something else. It doesn't matter. Everyone is free to find their own way to get the best result. If the bed is very uneven and has a depression in the middle, a distance sensor or a mild aluminium bed is a good choice. Cleaning of the heat bed is also necessary from time to time. Filament residues, fingerprints and other contaminations should be removed, at the latest when problems arise. If the adhesion of the original print bed decreases at some point, this pit or due to too much cleaning, it is advisable to use a permanently print plate or to treat the surface. To counteract the component distortion by cooling, there are various possibilities which can be controlled via the slicer. Heat distortion is caused by a temperature difference between nozzle, heat bed and 3D object. One way to counteract this is to increase the bed temperature and lower the nozzle temperature so far as possible. However, this is not sufficient for higher prints, which is why a closed chamber is the ideal solution. As an alternative to a closed chamber, a trough shield can serve. This trough shield encloses the component, protects it from drafts and reduces heat loose, especially if 3D objects in higher layers are tearing apart. This variant would be the most promising without the closed chamber. Reducing the power of the component fan can also work like a small miracle by reducing the cooling rate. Infill can also promote warping so it may be a good idea to reduce the fill density to a reasonable minimum. If heat distortion also occurs with smaller components, it can be controlled quite well by further slicer settings. The simplest variant is a prim, which can be significantly increase the bed adhesion. If this is not sufficient, or if the tensile forces are so strong that the prim is pulled apart, it is a good idea to attach holding pads to the object, which can be several layers high if necessary. These parts are available as a plug-in under Cura, named Tap Anti-Warping. Alternatively, you can of course tour them yourself and adjust them accordingly. Also a ruft can significantly increase the print bed adhesion by enlarging the surface. Some of the methods mentioned can of course also be combined with each other. If you all use now these options, you should normally no longer have any problems with warping. If you do, the only thing left is to change the design of the component to ensure better printability or to use a heated chamber. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please leave me a like. If you want to see me again, click on the subscribe and then hit the bell to not miss any new videos. Happy printing! See you next time. Bye!